Tonight, I would like to share with you my PhD research on identifying a new disease target called granulocyte colony stimulating factor in order to prevent against a serious neonatal lung disease. In normal pregnancy, a full-term infant is born between 37 to 40 weeks of gestation, whereas an infant born before 37 weeks is considered to be preterm. Globally, the number of babies that are born premature each year is approximately 15 million, and it is the leading cause of neonatal illness and deaths, particularly in extremely premature babies that are born before 26 weeks. So when a baby is born premature, their lungs are underdeveloped, so they cannot breathe properly. And in order to support their respiratory needs, the hospitals provide them with supplemental oxygen. However, excessive exposures to this oxygen can lead to the development of a very severe lung disease called bronchopulmonary dysplasia, or BPD. This disease affects 75% of babies born premature. Currently, there is a lack of effective treatments for BPD, and the available therapeutics to improve lung maturity can have adverse side effects on other organs such as the brain. But essentially, no cure exists. So this disease in these babies will continue to worsen as they age into adulthood. Therefore, there is an urgent need to identify new and effective disease targets to prevent against BPD. Within the lungs, there are millions of these balloon-like air sacs called alveoli or air spaces, which function primarily to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out of the bloodstream. The alveoli are also the main area affected in BPD, which impact on the baby's ability to transport oxygen to other essential organs. On the left-hand side is an image of a lung from a term infant. Circled in blue is an open pocket, which is the alveoli, and each alveoli is surrounded by an alveolar wall shown in pink. You can see a lot of small open pockets in this lung, which is a sign of normal lung development. Whereas on the right is an image of a lung from a preterm infant affected by BPD, showing larger and fewer alveoli per lung area. This results in reduced surface area available for gas exchange. In addition, there are unwanted immune cells that enter the lung, as shown by these arrows. These immune cells are capable of destroying the lung tissue, compromising the structural integrity of the lung. So we know that supplemental oxygen is crucial for the survival of preterm babies, but it also promotes the activation of immune cells, specifically macrophages that are resident within the alveoli, as well as unwanted immune cells such as monocytes, and neutrophils that once activated can release these toxic molecules that can cause the breakdown of the normal alveolar structure. And this results in the typical alveolar damage we observe in BPD. Granulocyte colony stimulating factor, or GCSF, is a key protein that promotes the growth and survival of these immune cells. A previous study has shown that GCSF is elevated in the lungs of preterm babies. However, little is still known about whether GCSF plays a key role in BPD. So for my PhD, I aim to investigate this gap in research. Early in my PhD, I characterized a mouse model of oxygen-induced BPD. So to do this, I exposed mice to 75% oxygen from postnatal day one, which is the first day after birth, up till postnatal day 14. At day 14, mice developed BPD-like lung damage. When we assessed GCSF levels in the lung, we found that there was a striking increase in this protein in the lungs of oxygen-exposed mice compared to the room air controls. This increased production in GCSF suggests that there could be a link between GCSF and BPD. To determine whether GCSF does contribute to the development of BPD, we exposed wild-type control mice that are genetically normal and mice that are genetically deficient in GCSF to the same BPD model I used previously. I then assessed two key features of BPD, which include lung damage and lung immune cell activation. For lung damage, I examined changes in the alveolar structure and changes to normal tissue components such as protein. For lung immune cell activation, I examined changes to cell appearance and total cell number, as well as the release of toxic molecules. We hypothesized that mice that were deficient in GCSF exposed to this oxygen-induced BPD model will show reduced lung damage and reduced immune cell activation. 
To first examine lung damage, I generated high-powered images of lung sections from wild-type and GCSF-deficient mice. Again, these open pockets are the alveoli, and the alveoli are surrounded by the walls. Both roommate controls show a similar preserved alveolar structure, whereas in the wild-type high-oxygen exposed mice, there is severe structural decay in the lungs, as well as an increased presence of immune cells. Comparatively, in the GCSF deficient mice exposed to oxygen, there is a relatively normal intact structure of the lungs and less immune cells present. Quantitation of the structure reveals that there's a significant increase in alveolar size in the wild type oxygen exposed mice, which is reduced in the GCSF deficient oxygen group. So this is indicating that there is improved surface area available for gas exchange in these GCSF deficient mice exposed to oxygen. Next, to further assess the degree of structural damage caused by oxygen, we stain specifically for damage proteins. To do this, I stain the lungs with 3-nitrotyrosine, which marks areas of protein damage in black and brown. Compared to the room air controls on the left, there is greater black-brown staining in the wild-type oxygen-exposed alveoli and to a lesser extent in the GCSF deficient oxygen group. And this is supported through the quantitation here, showing reduced protein damage in the GCSF oxygen mice. These two findings have really shown that GCSF does contribute to the deterioration of the alveolar structure, as well as the tissue integrity in BPD. So next, we wanted to assess the second feature of BPD, which is immune cell activation in the lungs. In the room air control groups, uh, the predominant immune cell in the alveoli are alveolar macrophages resident to that site. These cells are small, round, and that's pretty consistent with a relaxed or unactivated state. Whereas the macrophages in the wild type oxygen group are large and contain vacuoles, and this is consistent with a state of activation. In this group, there is also the presence of unwanted neutrophils and monocytes infiltrating into the lung. The macrophages in the GCSF deficient oxygen group are a little bit different. They're smaller and they look less activated, similar to the roommate control groups. When we quantitated immune cell number, we see an increase in immune cells in the alveoli in the wild type oxygen group, but not in the GCSF deficient oxygen exposed mice. What this could mean is that in the absence of GCSF, immune cell activation and entry into the lung becomes ameliorated. So it's not surprising that when we look at the release of a toxic molecule, specifically interleukin-6, which can be produced by these activated immune cells and cause damage to the lung, that interleukin-6 is only elevated in the lungs of wild-type mice exposed to oxygen. But levels in the GCSF deficient oxygen group are very similar to the room air controls. So these two findings then demonstrate the GCSF also contributes to lung immune cell activation and the release of toxic molecules observed in BPD. In summary, my really exciting PhD results show that mice deficient in GCSF have reduced BPD-like lung damage and reduced BPD-like lung immune cell activation, resulting in protection in these mice from the development of oxygen-induced BPD. Therefore, GCSF could act as a new disease target against BPD, and we hope that by blocking GCSF, we could be able to preserve the early and long-term lung health of these preterm babies. I would particularly like to thank my lab and my supervisors, Associate Professor Margaret Hibbs and Dr. Evelyn Santikos. Thank you.